Hey everybody, um, welcome back. This is uh, gonna be part two of the M50 engine build. Um, so in today's video, I got a couple stuff uh, planned for today. Um, first off, I think we're gonna go ahead and just thoroughly clean everything. Um, I have all the pistons right here. Um, they're pretty dirty. There's a lot of uh, carbon deposit on them. So I'm thinking first we can just start by taking off all the old rings, um, giving each piston a uh, thorough cleaning. Then we can move on to the, uh, the block um, and just thoroughly clean it, uh, make sure it's good to go. And from there, switch the camera back over. Uh, from there, um, I'm thinking we can uh, start measuring the, um, the new bearings that we got for the connecting rods for the uh, crankshaft. And uh, we could also start um, filing down the new piston rings and uh, get them properly gapped. Um, and then we can start assembling everything. Uh, so I guess we'll see how far we go in this video. Um, but yeah, uh, let's go ahead and get started. All right, so for cleaning the pistons, I have the sacrificial Tupperware here. Um, so I'm thinking of starting off with some WD-40 and uh, just a brass brush here and some scotch bright and uh, cleaning everything off with some brake clean. I'm going to try to avoid using harsher chemicals for now. Hopefully this will be good enough to uh, remove all the carbon buildup, uh, but if not, then I guess we'll just escalate and escalate and uh, yeah, I have some um, some oven cleaner in the back. Hopefully we don't got to use that stuff because it's pretty toxic. Um, but yeah, I'm just going to go ahead and start cleaning everything off and uh, hopefully it comes off pretty easy. So, since I'm not going to be reusing these rings, I guess it doesn't really matter, I take them off. Um, but I did end up picking up this tool here. It's just a uh, piston ring expander. Um, I think it's pretty neat. Just to kind of make the job a little easier. Even though, okay, there you go. Just to make the job a bit uh, easier. And uh, I think it'll come in handy when we go and install the new rings. Um, hopefully it'll keep um, the rings from deforming so we don't got to put them on and uh, you know normally when you put them on you got to kind of twist them around and you gotta yeah you kind of have to there's a chance of damaging them I guess um, I'm not too worried about it but um, I guess I was a little paranoid so that's what this tool's for let's take off all these rings like I said we're not reusing these so it doesn't really matter They're gonna to want to fight me a bit. Oh no, we're good. Is the first one? It's a really good tip I found online through the uh, interwebs is to use an old piston ring uh, to clean out the inner grooves here. So I got a piston ring right here. I'm just gonna cut this bad boy in half. And I'm just gonna basically maybe add a little bit of lube in there. Help break up that uh, carbon. And uh, I'm just gonna kind of run it up inside. Hopefully it'll help. Get that old carbon out. These pistons aren't honestly that dirty, um, as you can see, just from a couple minutes of cleaning. Um, it's already looking a lot better. Um, I'm thinking I'm gonna leave like this part here alone. Um, I'm not really uh, too fixated on making sure this is like spotless. Um, I just want to, I just want to kind of clean off most of the carbon buildup that was tr um, that was on the top here. Um, so. I'm honestly probably close to being done with this one. Just got to clean out the grooves here and uh, I'll wash it all down with some brake clean and uh, we'll move on to the next one. Ooh, there's a lot of gunk in there. Maybe I could show you a little bit of it. See that? I don't know if you can see that. All that gunk coming out. Alright, so I finished up uh, cleaning all the pistons. 
Um, here's the aftermath. It is a disaster. Um, here are the pistons. So looks like WD-40, um, some Scotch Brite, and uh, a couple of um, brass and a little bit of steel brush work um, really helped to just clean the pistons out. And uh, using the uh, piston ring to clean the inside here worked really well. Um, like I said, this part right here, I'm not too worried about. Um, these are used, so it is what it is. Um, but I got them all cleaned up. They're all in um, good shape. So now um, we can move on to filing down the new rings. So let me go grab them. And uh, if you start noticing a small um, difference in quality, uh, I did upgrade my camera. Uh, it is Black Friday, so I decided why not. And uh, I think it looks pretty good. So future videos are going to look sick. All right, so I've cleaned off my table a bit. So let's bring on the new parts here. Grab it. Oh. All right, so brought all the stuff. Um, these are all the new parts, or at least some of what we'll be using uh, today. Here are all the uh, piston rings. Set that aside. Um, in this box, I also have um, these are the bearings for the connecting rods, uh, oil filter. Um, guide pins and some extra gaskets one of these yeah some seals uh, for the rear main in the front might not use those um, yeah we got a lot of stuff ahead of us but we're talking about piston rings right now so these are the piston rings these are the just OEM um, molly rings um, I also purchased a uh, piston ring filer, so this is what we'll be using uh, to grind them all down. So this might be a longer process, but it is what it is. And uh, this is the uh, paper I'll be referencing for the specifications. Um, I got this off of, uh, I forgot the website, but it's a, uh, a piston ring company. Uh, they make performance piston rings. Um, a lot of people kind of reference this chart here. Um, I think we'll be shooting for, I think it was a uh, street moderate turbo. Um, so the bore, this is top ring, second ring, and oil ring rails, uh, minimum gap per inch of bore. Uh, so we're going to have to do a bit of math to figure this out. So bore times five thousandths, bore times uh, five and a half thousandths, and fifteen thousandths for the oil ring rails. Yeah. Um, so this is what we'll be referencing. And uh, I also have all the paperwork. Um, in the last video, I showed the uh, measurements for um, the bore, uh, for the out of round, taper, and diameter. Um, this is kind of where I got those measurements. Um, this is all the specifications for the engine from uh, Mitchell One. Um, I did have to make an account with them, but they gave me access to all this and I only um, made an account for like a month. I think you had to pay monthly for it, so it wasn't too bad. It might have been a couple of days, actually. I don't remember. Um, this has a lot of what we need as well, so we'll kind of be going back and forth in between these two. Um, but for now, this is what matters. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and take the piston rings out, and we can start filing them down. All right, so let's open this one up here. Um, we'll go through this one, and... Then I can speed through the rest just because I'm thinking this is probably going to end up being a monotonous process. Uh, it's probably going to take a while, I'm guessing. These are the new rings, though. Kind of shows you. It's got some photos, so that's nice. So let's start with the top ring C, A, B, C. Yeah, let's start with the top ring. Fuck it, one up. So let's open this bad boy up. All right, cool. So let's go ahead and measure this. Let's take it over. Um, actually, let me put you guys down real quick. Let's take off a uh, first piston ring on this. All 
All right, let's take this a bit further down. Try again. Okay. So our bore is 3.3, um, more specifically 3.308. Um, it doesn't really matter. 3.3 uh, is good enough. And we're going to multiply it by five thousandths of an inch. Um, I forgot to do the math here. Uh, but I just did the math for both the top ring, second ring, the oil rings. Um, there's no math for that. That's just a minimum. Um, for the top ring, I uh, got 3.3, multiplied it by uh, five thousandths. And this is going to be our top ring uh, gap measurement. This is uh, 16 thousandths of an inch. Um, 16, 17, is, it, the real measurement was like 16, 5. Uh, so I'm just going to be generally shooting for 16th. Um, if it's a little bigger, that's okay. Uh, for the second ring, uh, we multiply it by um, 5 and a half thousandths, and that gets us uh, 18 thousandths. So this is our top ring end gap measurement, um, or piston ring gap measurement. This is our second ring piston ring gap measurement. So. Right now, um, when we measured uh, the top ring here for cylinder one, um, I was getting 11 thousandths of an inch. So that means we're going to have to open this up um, by 5 thousandths, if my math is right. Yeah, 5 thousandths of an inch. All right, so I got it set up here. Um, plan is to just kind of butt it up against these two posts. and push one side onto the ring uh, filer, kind of push in on it, make sure it's flat, and uh, just start grinding away. <clears throat> All right, so grind it down a bit. Um, I still don't know how long this process is going to take, so I'm just going to go ahead and uh, measure this out real quick and uh, see what it's at. All right, uh, measure it again, and uh, now I'm getting 14 thousandths. So I'm just going to continue opening this up and uh, move on to the second ring. And uh, we'll just do that across all cylinders. Um, it's the same process across all of them. Just uh, throw it down in there, uh, take it down about an inch or so, uh, measure it. I took it down a bit further this time, actually, the piston ring, uh, just to see if I would get uh, the same measurement. And I did. I was getting 14 thousandths. Uh, if it's real snug in there, um, I don't want to put too much force when you're measuring. Um, if you do, you might uh, move the ring, and if you move the ring, you might uh, get a different measurement. So uh, try to be gentle when you do it. Um, and uh, I think what we'll do is just um, I'll just start working on all of these, and I'll do a time lapse or something. And uh, yeah, we can get all these measured up and uh, properly gapped. All right, so just finished uh, gapping all the piston rings. Um, I labeled them all um, since I, uh, when I measured them all and gapped them, um, I did them all per bore just so I could know that um, they were all properly gapped for its specific uh, resting place. Um, so here they are, they're all ready to go. Um, so now I'm gonna go ahead and start uh, checking the main clearances um, for the main bearings. So first, before I do that, I got to install the uh, oil squirters. So don't forget about these. I'm pretty sure you'll have a loss of oil pressure if you do that. Um, so first I'll drop those in. Um, I already actually, um, I went ahead and uh, just kind of sprayed them with some uh, WD-40, ran them through the uh, check ball here and just made sure they weren't uh, stuck closed or anything. And they're not, they're good to go. So I'm gonna go ahead and drop those in. And then I can uh, start cleaning these off 
and uh, clean off the uh, caps and start preparing for the uh, new bearings and uh, measuring them up. So let's do that. Good, good. All right, let's do this. All right, so first thing, don't forget to put these in. It's definitely something I would do though. Let's drop these in. The oil squirters. Um, and these are fitting pretty snug, but um, I don't know if there's a, like a tolerance to these or anything. I think you can just pop them in and you're good to go. Um, I think they're supposed to be kind of snug, but nothing kind of holds them in place besides the, uh, uh, the bearing when you got everything bolted up together. So got those in. All right, so to clean the, um, the block uh, where the bearings rest, I'll just be using some acetone and a microfiber rag here just to kind of get all the oil off and clean everything up. And I actually have gloves on for once. I always forget to order uh, gloves whenever I know, but I didn't forget this time. This is my first time doing this, so I'm excited. I'm also nervous about the uh, bearing clearances. So, just kind of hoping they'll be all right. So, I got this cleaned up and prepped and ready to go. Let's go ahead and open the uh, box and bearings that I forgot to open up already. Probably gonna take a while. <laughs> so just bear with me here. So thrust bearings. Just gotta remember where they go. I actually don't remember. I have to check back on the footage. I also have the benefit of uh, having more than one engine at the moment, so I got a reference. That's nice. Alright, and they got them all cleaned off. So let's go ahead and drop them in the car or in the engine. Alright, so let's drop them in. a good push all right these are pretty easy to line up um, they do have the tang on one side so gotta remember where the uh, thrust bearing goes no it goes on uh, the sixth one here so Like I said, this is kind of the uh, moment of truth right here. If for some reason they're too tight, we're gonna have to halt on the uh, build here for a week or two while I order a set of new ones, or at least uh, figure out which ones are small and buy some uh, smaller ones and. Just try to figure out how to get them to uh, be within tolerance. And I'll show you where I got my tolerances right now too. Let's clean up the uh, crankshaft and get it on. Alright, I got the crankshaft all cleaned up. So, oh, again, same procedure. It's a bit of acetone. Try to be gentle with it. Oh, it's just heavy though. See if I can drop it in smooth. Okay, let's try that again. Okay, let's try that again. Let's drop it in like this this time. Oh, 
Okay, try one more time. Try this one more time. We got it. Oh yeah, that was easy. Yep. Cool. All right, so now to measure bearing clearance, we're gonna be using plastic gauge. This stuff right here. If you don't know what this is, you guys probably do, but it's just a thin strip of plastic um, that gets applied on top of the um, crankshaft uh, journals. And uh, you put the caps on top with the bearings and everything. You squeeze it all down, you torque it down, then you uh, unbolt everything. And depending on how much it's uh, the plastic's been squeezed, uh, you can measure it with these notches right here. They're like indicators, and it tells you right there. I don't know if you can see that, but it tells you like how much, um, depending on the size of the uh, plastic and how much it's been squished, you can tell whether or not it's, you know, thousandths, um, one and a half thousandths, two thousandths, or three thousandths. So. We're gonna be applying some of this stuff and uh, measuring every uh, journal bearing that we'll be able to tell if we're within uh, clearance or not. So let me cut it up and we can start applying it. So again, this is what it looks like here. It's really thin, just piece of plastic. And it's super accurate too. Um, it's used by many engine builders. So it is legit. So I'm thinking we'll do these one by one. Um, instead of doing them all at once, uh, just to be on the safe side here. So let's start with let's start with number one here. So I'll put this on, and uh, I actually forgot to clean the uh, caps. Oop, fell. Right now, real quick, um, off screen, I'll just uh, clean off the uh, caps here, and I'll. Uh, put the bearings on, get those cleaned up, all that, and uh, I'll be right back so we can measure these. All right, so let's put the first one on. Oh, there goes that. And as I'm doing this, I'm gonna try not to uh, rotate the crankshaft in any way. Uh, since there is no lubricant on the bearings, I don't want to mess them up. All right, just double checked the uh, specifications for the uh, main caps here. And I found 17 foot pounds initially. And then uh, 50 degrees after that. So we're going to be using both, both a uh, torque wrench as well as a uh, torque angle wrench attachment thing. Seventeen. Um, for these, uh, I do have new bolts, but uh, I'm just reusing the old bolts just to kind of check everything. Um, for this process, I don't want to. Oh, it was the wrong size. I don't want to use. Yeah, new bolts, because supposedly they're one-time use. So this is the tool I got for doing angles. You can see that. Just gotta figure out how to set it up here. All right, 50. This is a jank tool. <laughs> Should've bought a better one. It's working better now. 50 degrees. All right. So again, I got these measurements uh, from Mitchell. Um, so they should be pretty legit. Let's take these off again. Just one. Just two. So it's 17 foot pounds and 50 degrees. Don't forget it. There we go. Yep. 
It's squished a bit strange here. Might have to try this again. Let's measure this up. Yeah, I think I'm going to try this test one more time. Looks like it went from... Um, so, the more squish it is, the tighter the tolerance. So, on this side, we got about a thousandth. And on this side, we got about, honestly, probably three thousandths, if not bigger. So, let's try that one more time. Third time's a charm, all right? So, uh, I ended up doing it again, uh, twice. Um, the first time... I was, I was getting the same weird measurement, so I was like, what's going on here? Uh, so I looked at the other side of the crankshaft, and uh, it wasn't um, fully set in place. Uh, so I just kind of fixed everything and uh, did it for a third time. And uh, now everything's looking a bit more consistent. As you can see, the line is staying um, the same thickness throughout. So if I measure this, um, let's try this here. I measure it looks like we're getting two thousandths of an inch. Yeah, looks like it's two thousandths. It's definitely not three thousandths. So looks like it's slightly smaller than two, so that means it's slightly larger than two. Um, I'm just gonna call it two. So, two thousandths is within tolerance. Um, so tolerance for the main bearings is between, um, what is it? Let me recall here. Actually, let me grab the paperwork and show you. So here are the uh, specs. If you look right here, this is what we need. Oil clearance for both um, the connecting rod bearing and the, this one's for the main bearing. Um, they're both between 0.8 thousandths of an inch to 2.3 thousandths of an inch. So right now we're at around 2 thousandths of an inch. If not, it's slightly bigger than 2. So it's within tolerance. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to call it good. Um, it is closer to the max, um, which I guess, um, call it what you want. Um, I think it might be, you know, slightly, slightly good since... Um, the clearance is just slightly larger. Um, my main concern was uh, I was worried that we would be, if anything, on the smaller side of things, but we're actually on the larger. Um, I'm going to call this one okay, um, but I'm going to do the rest of them and uh, just see if, if anything's larger than this, um, then we might have a problem. Um, so I guess we'll see. I'll just continue on with the uh, remaining uh, main bearings and uh, we'll go from there. All right, and we're back. Uh, sorry about the uh, recording um, for measuring all of these. Um, I checked my camera and it looked like uh, it died on me. Um, but I'm back, we're back, we're good. Uh, so I got all these measured up. Um, as you can see, it's a plastic gauge. They're all measuring, let's see, let's grab a good one here for reference. Let's do that one. It looks like they're all measuring about um, one and a half thousandths of an inch. You can see right there. It's not quite big enough for thousandths. Not quite small enough for two. So that's one and a half. Um, one and a half is within specification. It's like right dead in the middle. So that's a good thing. Um, all of these measured one and a half thou. Um, the only thing was the front one here. This one actually measured two thousandths. Um, but that's okay. Um, I'm actually kind of glad that it's on the bigger side. Um, I was actually kind of hoping these would all be around 2,000. Um, but, you know, one and a half is fine. Um, it's a pain trying to order new ones and all that. This is within specification, so I'm happy about it. Um, so now that we got all of these measured up, um, I'm going to go ahead and just remove the plastic gauge. Um, I know that you can just leave the plastic gauge in and the oil will dissolve it. Uh, but I'm just going to go ahead and... Uh, use a bit of acetone and get that all off um, off camera and uh, when we come back um, we'll do the final install of the crank uh, I'll probably remove the crank right now or once I get it cleaned up um, and we'll lubricate the bearings properly and uh, we'll get everything in place and torqued down and uh, the crankshaft will be in its final resting place 
All right, so the crankshaft is finally in. Um, it spins. It's been on the tight side, but I think that's just because of the uh, clearance. Um, but there's no binding or anything like that. Um, it's spinning pretty smoothly here. Uh, so I'm excited about it, honestly. I'm just glad all the bearings fit and uh, we didn't have to order some new ones and wait like a week or two for them to show up. That's a pain. Um, so yeah, uh, we got it in and I'm excited. On the next part, we'll be doing the connecting rod bearings uh, as well as the piston rings and uh, I guess we'll see where to go from there. Um, we could probably finish up with the bottom end too. Uh, we still have to weld on the uh, bung for the oil pan. I'm going to be uh, using a new oil pan since one I had before was cracked, but uh, yeah, honestly, um, not much to say other than that. Um, uh, if you guys liked the video, uh, like, subscribe, all that stuff. Um, I greatly appreciate it. And uh, yeah, I'll see you guys in part three. So take care.